In recent years, China's electric vehicle market has seen rapid growth, with various electric tricycles and four-wheelers entering the market. Among these, the mini four-wheeled electric vehicle known as Lao To Le, or Happy Grandpa, has been particularly popular with the elderly. However, Chinese traffic law enforcement departments have recently begun to regulate these vehicles. Starting from January the 1st, Happy Grandpa vehicles were no longer allowed on the roads and cannot be parked in public places like roads, squares, and parking lots. These vehicles, previously a common sight, have disappeared, and the seniors who once favored them have lost a beloved mode of transport. Happy Grandpa vehicles gained popularity among the elderly over the past decade and was named for its primary users. Compared to high-speed electric vehicles, Happy Grandpas have a lower speed, with most having a range of about 100 kilometers and a top speed of 40 to 50 kilometers per hour. They were not monitored by law enforcement and could even be purchased on shopping websites like Taobao and JD.com. Based on size, features, and other standards, their prices ranged from a few thousand to 20 to 30,000 yuan. Although similar in appearance to golf carts, a high-end happy grandpa could be equipped with air conditioning, GPS, reverse parking sensors, shock absorption systems, and car chargers. Essentially, they had nearly all the features of a car but at a tenth of the cost. Apart from their affordable price meeting the needs of a broad audience, these vehicles often resembled luxury cars in appearance. At the China Jinan New Energy Automobile Electric Vehicle Exhibition, held in Jinan in August 2022, various mini luxury cars were displayed. For example, models resembling the Mercedes-Benz G-Class SUV, a favorite among many but usually out of reach due to its high price, were presented as small electric vehicles available at a fraction of the original cost. Because of their low cost, this made the electric vehicle not only dominate the domestic market, but also gain popularity overseas. Data shows that from 2013 to 2018, the domestic low-speed four-wheel electric vehicle market grew rapidly, with sales exceeding 1.5 million vehicles in 2018. The classification of Happy Grandpa in China is ambiguous making it difficult to categorize them as either motorized or non-motorized. This ambiguity means they are not subject to the regulations that apply to motorized vehicles. Drivers of these low-speed electric vehicles are not required to take a driving test, and the vehicles themselves are exempt from annual inspections and insurance, resulting in lower costs. However, this lack of clear standards means that Happy Grandpa often do not meet the criteria for non-motorized vehicles in terms of size, quality, and speed nor do they meet the performance standards for motorized vehicles, making them difficult to regulate. Despite operating in a regulatory gray area, Happy Grandpa cars have become popular in some communities in China for their affordability and appealing design. They are commonly used for tasks like grocery shopping, transporting children, and connecting to public transport stations. Their ease of use, convenience in parking, low cost, and lack of need for registration, driving license, or insurance have made them a favored choice among urban and rural consumers. However, the absence of registration and licensing requirements for happy grandpas means that unless traffic police intervene, these vehicles are often beyond the reach of road surveillance, leading to traffic violations. The increasing number of these vehicles, driven by elderly individuals who lack formal driving training and familiarity with traffic laws, has led to concerns about road safety and an increase in traffic violations such as reckless driving and running red lights. According to data released by the Public Security Traffic Management Department in 2019, from 2013 to 2018, there were 830,000 traffic accidents caused by electric vehicles for the elderly. These accidents resulted in 18,000 deaths and 186,000 injuries. Beijing media also reported that in 2022, there were 131 traffic accidents in Beijing, involving illegal electric three- and four-wheel vehicles, resulting in 138 deaths. In 2023, accidents involving these vehicles led to a driver fatality rate of 71%, with 70% of the drivers aged over 60. Statistics from Beijing's Traffic Management Department show that in 2023, 85% of the drivers involved in fatal accidents with these vehicles had never received driving training. Behind these alarming figures lies the devastation of numerous families, earning these vehicles the name Mobile Cremation Urns. Last year, a traffic accident involving one of these vehicles sparked intense online debate 
and brought national attention to the safety issues of these mini four-wheel electric vehicles. On December 18, 2023, a 22-year-old female teacher was struck and dragged several meters by one of these vehicles, while out shopping for groceries, resulting in her death despite rescue efforts. The driver, a man in his 70s with the last name Lee, was found to have violated three regulations and was held fully responsible for the accident. However, following the incident, Mr. Lee and his family neither expressed any apologies nor initiated compensation discussions with the victim's family. In an interview, the driver's daughter admitted that her father, who had a history of cerebral hemorrhage, was allowed to drive and mentioned that he also suffered shock and high blood pressure at the time of the accident. Is your father not at home? No, he's not. He's unwell. He hit someone. He already had a history of cerebral hemorrhage, and then it seems his blood pressure rose. He was shocked, which caused his blood pressure to rise. Knowing he has such a condition, why did you let him drive this kind of vehicle? Usually, there's no issue, and his condition can be stabilized with medication. After the traffic accident involving an elderly driver, his daughter, who initially claimed to take the reporter and the victim's family to her father, fled on an electric bike. The victim's family, unable to accept this, demanded official intervention. Local authorities promised to assist in facilitating negotiations. A lawyer stated that although the driver was over 75, he still had to bear legal responsibility, but could potentially face a lighter sentence due to his age. Similar to the incident mentioned, happy grandpa vehicles are frequently involved in reckless behaviors such as erratic driving, illegally driving against traffic, improper parking, and running red lights on roads in China, leading to numerous traffic accidents. In addition to the dangerous driving by the drivers of these vehicles, accidents caused by the poor quality of happy grandpas resulting in explosions and spontaneous combustion have also been significant. Many of these vehicles are produced and sold under the guise of being utility vehicles, sightseeing vehicles, or logistics vehicles. The industry is characterized by low entry barriers and inconsistent quality standards, with many small workshops lacking proper manufacturing qualifications, contributing to the overall chaos and varying product quality. Due to production and cost limitations, happy grandpa vehicles often fail to meet production standards in terms of overall vehicle safety mechanical safety, battery safety, fire prevention, and flame resistance. Many of these vehicles lack essential safety features. Some models do not even have seat belts, let alone airbags. The poor quality of these products leads to severe issues, especially for those produced by small workshops. This is particularly concerning for new energy vehicles, which have higher safety requirements, and where battery safety is of paramount importance. On May 17, 2023, in Linyi, Shandong Province, a happy grandpa suddenly caught fire while driving near Shintian Plaza in Changlin Street, Linshu County. An elderly person and a child were trapped inside. After rescuing the elderly person, who was in shock from the suddenness of the event, they realized they had forgotten the child in the back seat. By the time the fire was extinguished and the grandfather remembered the child, it was too late. The child was severely burned beyond recognition. This news of a child being critically burned in a happy grandpa fire spread rapidly online, intensifying claims about the vehicle's lack of safety. As early as 2016, the China Consumer Association conducted crash tests on three popular electric vehicles for the elderly available on the market at the time. The results showed that even under conditions less riskier than real-life collisions, there were extensive injuries. These include severe head injuries to the dummy in the driver's seat, chest injuries due to the displacement of the front seat, and the body of the vehicle detaching, resulting in the dummy striking the steering wheel and windshield. These findings highlight the concerning safety issues with happy grandpas. It is said that driving them is like driving a ticking time bomb. To ensure public safety and maintain order, Beijing's Traffic Management Bureau announced that from January 1st, electric three- and four-wheelers would be banned from roads and public spaces. This regulation was followed by similar strict measures in other regions like Jiangsu and Anhui. The ban sparked ongoing online debates, with concerns raised about alternative transportation for the elderly. A netizen said, When I was in elementary school, my mom and dad were not at home, and only my grandfather drove the happy grandpa to pick me up from school. If happy grandpa is banned, children like me will be in trouble. Some netizens also said, the old man helps to take his children to and from school. 
He may be 60 or 70 years old, and you still dare to let him ride a two-wheeled electric bicycle to pick up or drop off children. Why do you want to ban three-wheeled fall-proof transportation, which can carry huge, heavy school bags and the weight of children? The people who made these rules, won't they get old one day? Won't they have children? Or maybe they don't have to go to work and don't need help from the elderly to pick up and drop off their children from school? A six-year veteran happy grandpa driver stated that the vehicle's biggest advantages are sun protection in the summer and wind protection in the winter. He relies on it whenever he goes out, especially for buying heavy items. If he had to use public transportation, he would have to carry these heavy items, which is a challenge for him. The topic of banning happy grandpa vehicles has been a subject of debate in recent years. China Finance Network conducted a poll in October 2023 on Weibo, asking if people support the ban. While many supported the ban, a significant number opposed it, suggesting a more nuanced approach rather than a blanket ban. Suggestions included making driving licenses mandatory for happy grandpa drivers. This decision, while addressing road safety, significantly impacts elderly mobility and aspects of family life, necessitating a careful approach from the government. Zhang Ruhua, director of the Traffic Planning and Design Research Center at Shandong University said, While people prefer not to have restrictions when using vehicles, there is a risk of danger. Once an accident occurs, it becomes both a personal and societal issue. Therefore, whether to implement a blanket ban requires further investigation and regulation by relevant departments and institutions. This process involves guidance and standard management. The crackdown on happy grandpa vehicles not only impacts the daily lives of the Chinese people, but also poses a significant threat to China's electric vehicle market. According to data from China Report Hall, the market grew by 62% from 260 billion yuan in 2018 to 420 billion yuan in 2020. The usage of electric vehicles increased from 5.5% in 2017 to 12.6% in 2020, with market share growing by 127%. The rapid market expansion led to increased investment in low-speed electric vehicles. There are about 100 large-scale micro-low-speed electric passenger vehicle manufacturers nationwide, mainly in Shandong, Henan, Hebei, Jiangsu, and Fujian, with Shandong being the largest manufacturing base for happy grandpa vehicles. This policy could lead to job losses in these industries, raising concerns about the future of those employed there. Following Beijing's ban on happy grandpas, the primary concern has become the mobility and daily life needs of the elderly. With China's aging population intensifying, by the end of 2022, over 280 million people aged 60 and above accounted for 19.8% of the total population, with a significant portion being younger elderly individuals. These are the main users of elderly mobility vehicles, generally in good health and with a strong desire for independent travel. A 2021 survey revealed that 75% of the elderly in China travel less than 5 kilometers for daily activities, with 21% not exceeding 1 kilometer. For the elderly community, main travel needs include taking grandchildren to and from school, grocery shopping, walking, and carrying goods. Happy grandpas are chosen due to their ease of use and low driving skill requirement. Public transport has limitations, making self-driving more appealing and cost-effective. Elderly people, especially those with mobility issues, find public transport challenging and risky compared to the young. Happy grandpas offer a safer driving environment with protection from weather elements and solves the last mile problem from public transport stops to home. With the disappearance of happy grandpas, the elderly face increased mobility challenges. Behind the happy grandpas lie not just a transportation choice, but a reflection of China's economic and social realities. In recent years, economic downturns have led many families to rely on elderly relatives for childcare, as younger parents are busy working. Research by the China Center on Aging shows that 66.5% of elderly people help care for grandchildren. More affordable and convenient than cars, happy grandpa vehicles have become a practical solution for both elderly mobility and family needs. Compared to the high cost of cars and the complex registration process, Happy Grandpas offer an affordable, stylish, and practical alternative. It provides weather protection and the comfort of air conditioning and heating at the price of an electric bike. 
This has made it popular among young people as well. The rise of happy grandpas highlights the contrasting travel needs in China. Affordability for the young and convenience for the elderly. Even though happy grandpas are banned, this could lead to the emergence of new types of low-speed electric vehicles as alternatives.